Let's do a calculation involving a hydrogen atom where we assume the hydrogen atom behaves like a particle in a box. And that's not a bad assumption. The hydrogen atom has an electron that's bound around a nucleus. That's an electron that has boundaries on it. And remember, when you take a wave like property, and that's the electron, and put boundaries on it, you naturally get quantized energy levels. So let's do a quantum mechanical calculation on a hydrogen atom. Already at this point in Chem 1, we can do a quantum mechanical calculation. So we'll take a particle, a hydrogen atom, and we're going to say what wavelength is emitted when it does a transition from n equal 3 to n equal 2 if it's a particle in a one-dimensional box of 150 picometers. Well, let's look back and say our particle in a box, the energy levels go as n squared h squared over 8m l squared. So the particle energy levels depend only on the length of the box and the mass of the particle. We know both those things. So let's do the calculation. 150 picometer box, an electron mass that we know, n we know, h we know. We can simply say, well, if it's a transition, I have to subtract n3 from n equal 2. I can do that. Let's put in those numbers, h squared. The mass of the electron, the length of the box, and again, I've changed picometers to meters. Always use meters, kilograms, and seconds, joules for energy. And n equal 3 to n equal 2 in our transition, that gives us an energy of 1.34 times 10 to the minus 17th joules. I didn't ask for an energy, I asked for a wavelength, but we can go from energy to wavelength just using the properties of the wave. The energy is hc over lambda. Lambda, the wavelength, is what we want, and we can calculate that. So if this energy is hc over lambda, then lambda is hc over the energy. Putting those three numbers in gives me a wavelength of 14.9 nanometers, tiny little wavelength, somewhere in the ultraviolet. It turns out for hydrogen atom, this transition is actually 656 nanometers. So this is a very hand-wavy approximate calculation, but you get kind of in the same ballpark within a factor of one order of magnitude, a factor of about 10-ish of the wavelength, just doing a simple particle-in-the-box calculation. That's the beauty of quantum mechanics. It has a lot of power to express the very tiny properties of matter.